Okay, welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 8. This time we're going to be talking about online testing and marks books. Now, we talked about gamification a couple of weeks ago, and this time we're going to talk about competitive learning. We're also going to look at online testing, how you use a marks book, and some examples of electronic testing. It is competition that can drive learning. Now, this may have happened to you. You may have competed in some kind of game or something where you had to learn um, the answers to a trivia questions to be able to do better in the game uh, or the answer uh, or try and do um, better each time. So I'm going to have a look at some of these different things. First one is going to be countries of the world. So this is uh, where's your country. The idea is when you play it, you have to identify, uh, you've got one minute and you have to identify all the countries of the world. And if you get it right, you get an extra three seconds. If you get it wrong, right, you lose a second, okay? Now, the idea is that you get through as far as you can. Now, I'm going to ask uh, all of you guys to have a go at trying to work out um, all the answers as best as you can. Now, you, if you scroll in, you can zoom in, just scroll out, you can scroll out. Now, Sierra Leone, uh, let's say I don't know where that is. Is this Sierra Leone? Is this Sierra Leone? Is, uh, is this Sierra Leone? No, it will take you in. So, you can actually just learn. Okay, well, there we go. I found where that is. All right. Once you've finished, um, there are 196. So if you get all the way to the end, well done. I've learned where all the countries are from playing this game. Now, I used to know where some of them were, but I've made it through all the way to the end quite a number of times now. What I want you to do, and this will be in the discussion board, is have a go at this game, play it once, and then go and play it again and see if you can beat your score. I don't mind how many times you play it, but um, see how you go. Now, next one is Japanese. Uh, so Japanese characters. Now, I don't know what character this is. Uh, let's say it's Sue. Good guess. Um, this one, I have no idea. Is it her? No, it's she. Yes, okay. Um, looks a bit like an N, so let's say it's an N. Right, so now I'm going through and trying to work out what these ones are. Is that all? Yes. Right, so oh, now the idea is that as you go through, you're going to learn what they are bit by bit. Right, so I've seen this one before. Uh, hang on, I saw this one before. Let's see. So this one before, right? Now this is um, Hiragana and these are um, Romanji. And you can adjust one of these, but uh, you can slowly build up the thing, uh, the knowledge of what the, each Hiragana um, looks like and what it means. And it's your own way of learning. Um, I find it's a great way of um, quickly testing the students and finding out, well, how they're going. Um, you can always reset and see how you go. Now, Another example, and I'll come back to that, is um, uh, like the bones of thing. Now this is Sporkle. Um, so Sporkle's got thousands, or probably almost millions of games um, that people have designed. So if I'm going to play this one, this is the Skeletons. Basically I have to put in um, the name, so let's say Skull. Right, and automatically tells, um, puts in where they are. Um, let's say Pelvis. No, Pelvis doesn't work because it's not the right um, terminology. Uh, clavicle, right, or my clavicle scene. Now you go through and answer it, and when you give up, it comes and identifies where they all are, so you can actually learn which ones you missed. And if you go to the full results, it tells you how many people have played it, and uh, how many, so in this case, 640,000 times, and which ones are most often grabbed versus which ones are least often. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. Right, so there's some examples. Now, Mission to Mars, Mission to a New Planet is another example of um, how you could use uh, competitive learning where you get each group to come up with their own ideas. Right, so done, where's your country? I want you to have a go at that. Learn Japanese, it's up to you. Uh, Boost in Biology, now this is a, a teacher, fantastic teacher, who basically has designed his whole entire uh, biology class t uh, on a game. Now, the idea is you're trying to sol solve um, or complete different things to get points and get your way out of uh, the, the situation you're in. Um, now, the idea is if you get 1,500 points, you get an A. If you get 1,300, you get a B and so on. So he's got all of his stuff and he keeps track of it on the Google spreadsheet. Um, um, and so the students can always see where they're up to. Now they can do extra credit to be able to boost their marks, but it's a really good because the students want to learn. They want to be given assignments so they can move forward. Online testing, so uh, John Hattie um, did a big meta study to, and he identified that one of the most important things to do is to give student feedback. 
Um, Sporkle, which we saw just a second ago, is really good because the students can immediately find out if, if they've done well. Now, Quizlet is another example of um, online testing. So, for example, let's look at meiosis. I think I'm spelling that wrong this time. All right, so meiosis. Now, there's 5,000 flashcard sets with the word meiosis in it. Now, I'm going to switch to only ones with images because I can. And I'm going to go on to this one. Let's have a look at it. And this is pretty good. So let's try testing it. Now, it's now taking the flashcards and setting them as a test. I've got it set to multiple choice. I would change this from 13 to, say, uh, 5 or 10. Uh, reconfigure. And I would get, and what you can do is grab the link at the top and send it to the students. And what we'll do is all, automatically pull it up. Now, notice as well that right, the first question had to be the same, although the answers are different, but all the rest of the questions are going to be different. Right? The idea is that some of them are the same. Um, the idea is it will spit out a random 10 of the 13 questions. Now they'll be in different orders, they'll have, the answers will be shuffled up to really make it harder. But from the student's point of view, they can go through and practice it. And it's good for revision. And this is, can also be testing as a form of learning. I get the students to take a screenshot uh, once they've finished it. So let's say I'm just going to quickly just quick go through and say these, these, and I don't know any other ones. And I go check answers. Instantly it gives me my feedback and said I'm wrong. This is what it should be. Now I can actually go and retest it. So reconfigure and it will give me another chance to do it. When I get my students to send me their results, they take a screenshot with the date, the time, the name, everything at the top, um, and identifying this and the results. And they have to send me three results. Um, by sending me three results, it gives they can go and do it as many times as they want. So I'll say, oh, you got the whole weekend to do this test. They can do it as many times as they want. When they've done it, they then send it me in the best three. Now, what happens if they do it 20 times and they send me in 100%? Well, if they've done it 20 times, they've probably learnt it. And that's the point. It's testing as a form of learning rather than testing of learning or testing for learning. All right, so that's Quizlet. Moving on. So I've done Spork, we've done Quizlet. Grade books. Now, there, it's up to you how you keep your grade book. You may keep it electronically or you may keep it on paper. Now, if you are keeping it on paper, please, every time you add in your assignment, take a photocopy. If you're keep, keeping it electronically, please, every time you add in your assignment, email a copy to yourself. So either way, you're keeping a backup. So many teachers say to me, oh, I don't know why you keep it electronically. What happens if you lose it? Well, I keep backups. It, I've seen heaps of teachers who have diaries who have lost them. There is no backup, you know? So unless you're photocopying it every time you add extra information, you're gonna, you, you've got no backup. So I'm gonna give you some examples of how I do some stuff. So I'm gonna to go to, first of all to, this is uh, my Excel spreadsheet and I'll give copies to everyone. So I've got in these three students here. Now whenever I set a test, and I've probably said this before, I always make sure I do 50% basics, 30% application and 20% higher order. Now I wanna keep all this information because it's important. Say I have my first student has got, 50, uh, has got uh, 45, uh, five and zero for their results. The next student has got uh, 5, uh, th uh, 30, and 15. And the next student has got 25, uh, 15, and 10. Now notice that every each of these students have got 50 out of 100 in total, at 50% and got a C. However, they've got very different results. And based on the fact that I can see each of them, it tells me a great lot. This student here, is it seems, has either run out of time or they're not very good at the harder stuff, but have worked very hard to do well in the easy stuff. They've done very well, need to be supported in the harder stuff. This student who does very well in the harder stuff, hasn't done very well in the easy stuff, is probably not revising very well. So they need help with the revision. And this student is working hard to do as best as they can. They, with a bit more revision, they should probably do well. A bit more support, they probably do well as well. Now, overall, um, uh, so I've put in here, this has got a weighting of 20, 10, 20. Right. I've also got another assignment here, which maybe is very simple. Right. It gives me a weight of here, uh, weighting of 10%. And over in term one, it's identifying who's done what. Now, um, and then you've got term two and so on. Now, a different example of the spreadsheet is this one. Now, this is an IB spreadsheet. So anyone that's working with IB, this, this is one I've used. And I've got, this is an arts one. 
Uh, originally, it was uh, made by the guys up in Blackwood and been re- it's gone all around the world. It's been changed over and over again. Um, this is probably still an old one, I apologise. But say I've got assignment one and I'm going to look at this person who's done um, the, the different aspects, say so ABCD for arts, and so it's out of 81088, or was. And so this student, student one has done a 6566. Six, six. Right, so it will give them an overall grade. Uh, and it will also identify all the things of what they're doing. Uh, so here I've got to put across what they're out of. Okay, and so now it's giving me an overall grade. Now IB is very different. Um, the good thing is it's telling me how they're going in the different criteria. So you could also use this for SACE. Now if I go to criteria script, um, sorry, the overall summary, it tells me how they're going overall. Um, and, oh, oops, sorry mistake um, and so as I go through and do the different assignments it will keep track of what they're doing so 8 10 8 8 right and this time it's got 4 5 4 5 okay so it's it's balancing now what they've done so as I said great for SACE um, great for IB now the other one that I use is uh, numbers and uh, numbers I tend to do a different assignment for a different page for each assignment so here when I'm tracking students work, I keep, I keep, so this is their business card, and here is all my notes for how the student's done. So one one row is all the notes of the student. So in this case, I've given them the results of how they're going for all the different aspects for research, um, clients, uh, planning, create and evaluate. Right, and overall the student's got 92%, done very, very well. Now, I the reason why I keep such good notes is I can go back at any time and check to see how the students done. Um, feedback is great, and these students do this through a series of interviews. Okay, so that's spreadsheets and keeping track of things. Now, Learning Boost is another really good uh, website, and it keeps track of your stuff uh, here. Yeah, so go to administration. So you can sign in if you've got a Google account, it's even better. All right, so I want to set up a new course. I've done that. I go save. All right, so I've set up music. And then I can go to a class roster. All right, so class roster, I can add in my students. So say I've got another student now. All right, and you, I would suggest you put in your e their email. All right, I can go to seating. All right, so here's a seating plan of what the students have done. So say I've got, you know, 12, and I can put in my students exactly how I want them. Perhaps some of them work better together and some of them work better uh, not next to other students. Right? So I've got my seating plan. I can also use this for my uh, growing attendance and everything. And you can also set up your, your schedule for where things are. Right? So in this case, I've got music across here and I'm working on an AB system. I can also adjust access for parents and students. So I can enable the parents to give them access and give them codes. Or I can say no, and you can put in policies as well. Now, if you're going to put in a policy for classroom codes and conduct, make sure the students are involved as well. Your gradebook then becomes all your assignments. Um, so if I want to add a new assignment, I just simply put it in and identify that it's a music performance. Uh, and this is going to be a test. Right, it's going to be out of 72. Right, and I put in the date when it's on. Right, and it tracks it. Right, so students can see exactly how they're going, and you can identify what they're doing and how they're going. So this kid might have gone 70 and uh, 67. Right, so it keeps track of them, and you can adjust also your grade scales in there. Really good program, very handy. Now, discussion board this week. First of all, I'd like you to um, use an example when you've been driven to learn to play a task, right, or a challenge that was not work related. In other words, maybe you want to run the bait, uh, city debate, maybe you want to do a jigsaw puzzle, maybe you want to learn new instrument, identify what it is. Uh, what do you think of the country as well? Challenge, how did you go? How, um, what score did you get? And if you did it, uh, when you did it more than once, how did you go after in the second and third attempt? And also, lastly, electronic versus paper grade book. Which one do you prefer to use? There is no right answer, but justify why you think you want to use that one. Uh, we discover, covered standards one, five, and seven. And what I'd like you to do is we're going to look at standard five, which is the last standard, um, and you're going to look at um, how that's related to ICT. If you've made it through all the videos, well done. Um, good luck getting everything completed.